Hi everybody, it's Laura. Hope you're having a good weekend. The weekend's almost over. So, um, what I'm going to do tonight, I did this painting the other day. This is the um, bloom swirl combination. And a lot of people said, I asked about um, in the, the groups that I posted it in, what people thought about the negative space. Some people like the white negative space and say that it makes this painting just stand out so much more with that negative area so that it's, there's a big contrast. I tend to agree. Some people do not like that negative space and like to see color all over the entire thing. But um, in discussing this on, uh, in a couple of the groups that I'm in, um, people said they would like to see this same exact painting on a black base with the black background. So that's what I'm going to do today so that you can see the difference between white and black and what it means to your colors. So that is what we are going to do. So I'm going to put that safely out of the way because painting with a black base is just very messy. Very messy. So you don't want anything around or in your way that can get, um, get paint on it because that black is oh, terrible. So I have my um, Color Place Walmart paint that is um, straight out of the can, out of the paint can. However, I did add a little bit. See, this is still too thick. The black is really, really thick. And so the Color Place White can be used right out of the container. This black is a different story. So we are going to be experimenting together tonight because I have not had a successful background yet using the black because it is so thick. And I've watered it down and it just never gets thin enough. So let's see. Oh, this is better. Okay. This is a little better. <laughs> this still feels too thick. Let's start spreading and see what happens. And you know, when you're doing this for a while, you will get the feel of it you'll know what is too thick for your colors. If they're too thick, they're too thin. You'll just know by the feel of it. So this is a little bit thicker than the white, but I think it might be okay. However, before I do my next painting with a black background, I'm going to water that down some more because it still feels a little bit too thick to me. But, see, you can still see the marks in it. Now, this is going to make it difficult. No, I don't like it. Don't like it. I'm going to add a little bit more water to it. And I've got a lot of paint in this container. So what I'm adding is, may seem like a lot, but there's so much paint in this container that it's really not. And the other thing is, you really don't want to be shaking your base paint right before you do a painting because it will... Um, you'll get more bubbles. Oh yeah, that's better. So let's get this going around the edges here. 
so I can get some over the sides. And you never really know until you pour it what you've got. I really love the black, uh, the white bases, so I don't do a whole lot in black, but your metallics and your fluorescents are going to show up really nicely on a black base, just like they contrast with your cell activator. So, um, I figured I'm going to get into black base mode here and do some experimenting and see what I like. However, I don't think I'm ever really going to be a huge fan of the black base. Just because it has given me trouble every time. Like you can, you can always see the swirls and stuff in the black. They like don't seem to level out nicely. But maybe now that we've got this thinner coat on here, we'll be good. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to spin this a little bit. See that? It might self-level. I don't know. So, we might end up scraping this. You never know. So, we're going to do the same exact colors. I'm going to put just a little bit more. See what I mean? You get paint all over you. It's just a mess. So I'm going to put a little bit more in the center, like another pillow, so that it's got something to move on. I'm just going to spin that a little bit. Spread it out just a little bit. Okay. Jeez, oh man. I got more all over me. <laughs> Look at me. This doesn't happen with the white. I don't know what it is. But there's just something about black paint that turns into a mess. So, we're going to do that big center circle like now see see the contrast how pretty that is it's a totally different look so we're going to put the blue in there oh i should tell you my colors that was liquitex turquoise blue paint this is liquitex bright aqua green Now picture how this is going to spread out on this black. It's going to be really pretty, I think. Should be anyway. Okay. Next one. Primary Elements Arctic Opal Pigment. One day this week, I have to make some more paint. I have to mix up some more paint of my colors. And I think I will do a video at that point in time to show you how you mix these colors and how simple it is, really. 
very simple but you've got to follow the recipe the recipe is key if you don't have the right recipe your bloom will not work and I found one that I like and I'm sticking to it so it's just a matter of getting a couple things it's an expensive hobby to start and then you've um, once you've got your colors and the things you need to mix it with you're set for quite a while so then it's not so bad this is primary element sea goddess that is going in next I'm just about out of it. Definitely need to mix these up. I could tell which paints I used most. Now these pigments should show up really beautiful on this black background. And this is a purple metallic. I got it on Amazon. It didn't have a brand name per se. I don't know where it came from. I don't know what it's called but I love it it is a beautiful metallic a little more of that okay so we've got our paints down now we need to get our little toothpick, pop our bubbles, now since we are going to leave some negative space, now here we go again. We've got to get rid of that. And we got to get rid of that. Okay. Here we go. Time for our trusty cell activator. I'm going to stick with the black. Just because I like how that contrasts with the colors too. Oh, there's a new bubble. There we go. Okay. Want a good amount of cell activator in there so we get that contrast. And because we're using a bigger canvas today, you want to make sure you have enough cell activator. So now let me look at the other one. Ooh. Gonna spread a little bit. Get some cells right there. All right, 
we've got a good amount of cells. Now we're going to spin it a little bit before we start swirling that lower part. Now I have a feeling this is just not going to move. Well, it's expanding a little bit. Let me get a pair of gloves. I'm not getting totally covered in paint. We're going to tilt this a little bit. I like the contrast with the black. I think I still prefer the white though because you get you get some of that white showing through and it's such a pretty contrast. Whereas the color to me is kind of getting lost in the black. So let's pick this up. I'm going to tilt. I don't know if you can see, but it is moving. We need that lower portion to move so we can do some swirling. Send it back over this way. Keep looking at the other one to see if I've got about the same size and I do so what I'm gonna do where's my tool there it is so now I'm gonna do the swirls oh this is really pretty so Let's take there's my paper towel. You do want to wipe off your tool every time. You do a swirl. Pop that little bubble right there. Oh, I like that black going in there. Let's do some of that. Yeah, that's pretty. I'm swirling much more on this one than I did on the other one. I'm not sure why I'm doing that, but it's because I saw that black go in there. So I think we need a little bit more black over here. We need to get some more swirliness coming out over here. And then 
We'll take something out like this up here to give it some balance with these little wisps. What do you think so far? I think I like that. I prefer the white background. But we'll see what it looks like when it's done. I think I'm done swirling. Let's spin it again. It's pretty. And see, now this here, see this little lump of black paint? This is what I'm talking about. This black paint doesn't like to come off the canvas as well as the white does. It doesn't leave a smooth surface. We're going to have to help that along a little bit. And hope that it dries properly. It's a really vivid, shiny black, though. I think it'll be gorgeous when it's varnished. And I'll be doing another video on that as well, so you can see how to finish your paintings. It's very simple, but you do have to put a finish on them, because if you don't, and it gets wet, you can have problems. Um, the paint actually dries to a matte color with no gloss and and your um, your colors kind of get muted so when you put that varnish on here it just brings it all back again and I will show you when I do the the finishing video what a painting looks like before you actually um, finish it and you can see the difference see this is I'm just afraid I'm going to have the lumps. This black is too thick. Let's spin it some more. Okay, hold on. It is. It's spreading. Experienced painters are looking this at this saying, what are you doing? I'm trying to spin out that. Let's spin again. Ah. 
That's better. All right, a few more wisps. And then I think we're done. And then we'll see what happens. The dried result is what is going to tell me if this black paint was too thin or too thick because um it, oh yeah no no I'm not doing this no more I need to stop I need to stop I'm stopping this is when you get into trouble is when you do too much and you don't know when to call it quits But yes, that black was too thick. Okay. Scrape the underside as we always do. And there's not a whole lot there, so that's telling me too thick. But it's very pretty. I do like the so let me let me grab the other painting. Try and get it underneath so I don't get any black on it. So here's the difference. You can see this one did not move. Like, oh, I forgot I I um I modified the the top. I should go in and do that. Huh. Yeah. But you could see the difference. Big difference. And it's up to you which you like better. Please leave a note in the comments and tell me which do you like better, the white background or the back, black background. I would be interested to hear your input. Um, our cells did go quite a bit further on this one. I think I am going to do some of the modifying of these petals up here because I forgot about that. And I really like that look. So... We're not done. <laughs> How about that? So let's, and that might, that might make a big difference here. I'm not going to do too many of them just because this paint is so thick. It really does change the look of it though. It makes it look so much more finished. And you know what? Different people like different things. So you never know who will say, oh, I love this painting. The metallics really do show up nicely, though. Start going to a new point. You always want to drag to the same point.
Oh yeah, that makes a nice big difference. I'm glad I looked at that other one to compare. Or I would have forgotten to do this. Okay, let me take a look. Yeah. That's oh, pretty. So I think we have enough swirls. I'm going to leave it there. So let's bring our other one back now. Then we'll give it a look see. There you go. Which one? Black background or white background? Well, let me know in the comments if you enjoyed the video. Um, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, like the video. Drop a couple comments in there if you have any questions. And so that's our experiment for tonight. I hope... Let me give it one more little spin. I hope it dries nicely without cracking. My concern is with the thicker paint that I might get some cracking. Oh, wow. This is getting prettier by the minute. Okay, let me pull you down. And we'll show you a close-up. Look at the sparkle. And the shine of those metallics and the wisps the wisps even have the sparkle in there look at that one that's pretty so yes it's definitely a completely different look but let me know what you think okay thanks everybody bye bye